guys, the Woodcraftsman here, and I got a small project I'm going to be working on here um, the week between Christmas here and New Year's. I'm going to be doing some shop updates, and one of the updates I want to do for a while is uh, change the uh, the uh, compressed air system in my shop as far as a, a shutoff. And basically, what I'm talking about is I'm looking for like an overnight valve. Now, in the past, I've actually had a uh, ball valve up here, as you can see, that I would just... Uh, pull that handle there to turn the air on at the end they would turn it off and basically what it does it's just more of a safety feature for turning the air off to the shop at night and uh, that way uh, if a hose breaks or something you know I don't uh, have a you know leaking compressed air or things like that um, somebody might say well, why don't you go turn your compressor off well I could but the compressors on the other side of that wall in the other shop you know in the other in the sheet metal shop and um, this is actually just a much simpler idea. Even if I were to have wired in another switch to the magnetic starter so I can control it over here to kill the compressor, that would be another option. I could also kill the breaker, but at the same time, I'm not the only one here that actually uses the compressed air. Uh, the sheet metal shop that my dad has actually uses it as well, so it's not really fair for me to control the compressor, but I can control the air into, into my shop. Uh, so basically what I'm going to be doing is what's happened in the past is this overnight valve doesn't always be closed just because it gets purely forgotten. Neglect. What I'm going to be doing here is actually adding, replacing that ball valve with an electric solenoid valve. It's a high capacity solenoid valve and it actually be tied into the lighting circuit. Um, the ball valve draws, or the, the solenoid valve draws about a quarter of an amp so it's not really adding anything to the lighting circuit but what it ensures is that when I turn the lights on I'll have compressed air and when I turn the lights off the air is shut down to the shop so that's kind of the project I'm going to be going on right now so I've already started to pre-assemble some of this and here is the uh, high, uh, high flow ball, uh, solenoid valve I got this off of eBay I think I paid like $30 for it um, it's a no name brand I could have gotten the air less I think it was oh, I'm not sure what brand it was it had the green uh, they call it a red cat maybe I'm not sure but uh, I could have got one of them but they're about $175 that's I'm going to try the concept first so I need to do some replumbing and then I also need to do electrical so I've already started to pre-assemble some electrical I just have a single um, outlet here it's a 15 amp and then uh, I've got a plug I've already pre-wired this um, solenoid valve to go into this 15 amp receptacle and the other end of this is actually going to be tying into the lighting circuit for this set of lights here. So the next steps I'll be doing is actually wiring in the electrical and then I'll actually be plumbing in the uh, solenoid valve. And I got to redo the plumbing here a little bit. Some uh, moron, aka myself, when he originally did the plumbing in here, I've got a half inch line coming from the compressor but it reduces down to 3 8 right away. I have no idea why. I think I did that basically because of that uh, Campbell Hulsefield water separator which I think I'm going to take out because I have this big uh, Parker um, coalescing filter that for the most part I opened up here just recently today actually and looked at it. it actually looked pretty clean. There's a little bit of uh, oil on it but nothing horribly bad. Um, and there's like no liquid in it whatsoever. There's a little bit of liquid in this one here. At the same time, I also have a oil water separator on the compressor that's been cycling um, with the auto drains. So, as far as purging. So what I need to do is replace that ball valve with half inch fittings. I'll probably just do a half inch nipple with a, uh, a half inch elbow. Then I will plumb in this uh, solenoid valve with a short nipple on each side and then remove the 3 8 uh, focus remove the 3 8 inch nipple um, out of that brass one there and go half inch right into that filter and I'll just do away with that cheap chemical hulsted water separator because it's not really doing a whole lot and uh, that'll be it for this project so like I said the idea of this is that when I turn the lights on I have compressed air when I turn the lights off I don't have compressed air because I never work in here without lights so it only makes sense uh, if I was going to do it differently I'd just run a separate switch along here down in um, by the light switches and actually just have a separate switch for the air but still something to kind of forget I never leave without turning the lights off so I was just I was taught growing up when you're not in the room turn the lights out so 
even if I leave for 10 minutes, lights are out. It's just kind of a good habit that I've started. So anytime I turn the lights out, the solenoid valve will close because it is a normally closed solenoid valve, which means that the only time this valve will open is when it's energized. Otherwise, it is normally closed. That's going to be today's project. All right. Okay, so I'm back in the shop here and I uh, got the electrical wired in. As you can see here, I've got the uh, single outlet tapped into the light circuit. So when I kill the lights, that solenoid will go back to its normally closed position. And I've got the solenoid uh, hooked up in here. Not quite done with the airline yet. I run into a snag and I need a, uh, another fitting to go from the output side because the old filter that was in there was a 3 8 in, 3 8 out, and the solenoid's a half in, half out. And I want to feed half back into that uh, big coalescing filter so I don't choke it down as much. I need to get a half inch nipple and then I need a half inch union. That'll be the next step, but I'm just going to show you that this, uh, this does work. So I've got the uh, airline depressurized right now. I'm going to walk over to the shop where the air compressor is and open with the ball valve and then uh, I'll show you the concept and how this works. Okay, so the airline is pressurized all the way up to that little ball valve you can see here with the wooden handle. I got that cracked just a little bit because if I open it wide open without that uh, anything on the other side of that solenoid valve, it just blast, get really loud and blow a lot of crap around. So anyways, come over here and turn the light on, go back up a little bit and There we go. There is the concept. Like I said, I need to get a couple fittings. It's uh, Sunday night here, so I won't get them tonight anymore, but I will get them uh, Monday here, and uh, we'll get this connected back up, and I'll have a pneumatic or uh, elect electronic uh, solenoid valve to control the air for the overnight use. I will keep you posted. Okay, so I got everything hooked up here. I've got the uh, new um, emergency valve or a ball valve, the manual one, uh, tied in, and that is a a half inch. I got a half inch copper line coming into the shop here. Everything goes to half inch once it gets to the coalescing filter, and it's three eighths and quarter. Um, so I've got the still have a manual ball valve in place just in case the solenoid valve uh, fails, and then uh, I've got the solenoid valve right there that is a 120 volt single phase and I've got that plugged into receptacle there that actually gets tied into the light circuit so when the lights come on the uh, receptacle gets energized and that valve opens uh, that solenoid valve is a normally closed valve meaning that its default position when it's not energized is closed so the only way it'll open is when you apply um, electricity to it We'll show you here how this works. Turn on this set of lights here, and here we go. I don't know if you heard that click, but uh, we now have compressed air. Okay. So, in the event of a power outage, or we just turn the lights off here, heard that tiny little click maybe, and uh, bleed off this hose here. I'll bleed it all the way off here. Got a 25 foot flexzilla here and a cheap, uh, I don't think I ever did a video on that. That's a cheap uh, Northern Tool hose reel. It came with a red 
rubber hose and it was just a horrible hose so I replaced it with a Flexilla and it's been, been great. Alright, no air in the airline. Come in here, turn the light on. We now have air. Come over here to the air hose. Got air. Yeah, that was a, a nice project. Uh, something I want to do for a while and just never really found the time to do it and kind of forgot about it. So basically the idea of this is it cuts all the air off to the shop when uh, when nobody's in it. So when the lights are out, the air gets cut off. And uh, it's just kind of a good um, good gesture overall just to you know shut the air off to the shop. Um, that way if you have a hose break or something that the compressor won't keep on running. One might argue, why don't you go turn the air compressor off? Well, I could, but then i got to go through the door over there and walk all the way around and go over to the other side in the sheet metal shop to turn the air compressor off. And to me, that's a pretty big nuisance. One might say, why don't you just kill the circuit breaker because you got the circuit breaker in your shop? Well, I could, but uh, at the same time, I'm not the only one who uses the air compressor. The sheet metal shop uses the air compressor as well. It's not fair to um, actually my dad, who's the HVAC contractor. This is just like the best overall result. Um, like I said, basically it's just more so so I won't have to remember to close that ball valve. So the ball valve now with the handle out will only get used in emergency situation where maybe you have to service the solenoid valve um, or service the coalescing filter, whichever. It's just kind of a good practice. Now it's automatic. Whenever you walk out, turn the lights out, air shut off. And I always turn out the lights when I leave. So that's just something I was taught to do when I was young. When you're not in the room, turn the lights out. Anyways, thought you guys might enjoy that. I'll show you the valve up here. It's a uh, high flow solenoid valve. Um, I believe it's like a diaphragm in there. 120 volt solenoid. I debated going 240 and then running a separate switch. Um, over by the light switch there, but to me it was just so simple just to tap into the lighting circuit. It was a, a nice feature. And uh, this is a different project I'll probably do a video on, but these are two inch and a half tubular stands I had uh, built at a custom welding shop about 20 miles west of me. Um, built these for the new miter saw station. So that'll probably be up in an upcoming future video. I just need to start painting. The other one I just wanted to take a break because I'm brushing all this and I don't like brushing paint. Anyways, yeah, there we go. Alright guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Questions and positive comments are welcome. Thanks for watching.